Hi guys, I hope that you are doing really well. I hope you're practicing radical self-care. I hope you're getting out there and you are exercising. I hope that you are seeking out or working with a trauma coach. Um, again, I, I've mentioned this a lot, but I'm a huge fan of EMDR. Do it, it'll help. Um, I just wanna talk about the messaging and the message that you may have received or gotten in this toxic relationship and with a narcissist and um, what a little bit about what it might say about you and about how your mindset um, so let's let's really go deep in this one and this is going to be off the cuff but i was thinking about how we let the narcissist or the toxic person we allowed them to to tell us what we feel or think about ourselves so on some level it's like you gave yourself over on a silver platter and allowed this person to undermine you and to tell you how to feel about you and the person that you allowed to tell you how to feel about you is somebody, if you really look at it, somebody who doesn't operate in the world of joy. They don't experience or have or feel or even operate in that world. Typically, they're not operating in the world of the spirit, of any sort of spiritual um, higher power because narcissists typically, they are their own higher power. Their mind is their higher power. Science is their higher power. And I am a huge, huge fan and believer in science. Don't get me wrong, but they, they let things of the material world sort of dictate their perspective on life. And so they didn't live in the world of possibility, of opportunity, of joy, of, of real, true love and support for another person. So you let somebody tell you how to feel about yourself who operates in a dark world of pessimism, of you know, no trust for other people, of paranoia, of even maybe obsessive compulsive um, tendencies. You let somebody who feels negative about everyone in the world and that has a negative, um, you know, world view and a stuck mindset instead of like a growth mindset instead of a powerful um, loving positive joyful wanting others to succeed mindset so if you step back and look at that you have to really analyze like why did I let this person tell me how to feel about myself rather than you know I started to tell me how to feel about me instead of looking to them you're looking to someone or you look to someone who is very ill equipped to tell you how to feel about yourself somebody who believes that they're superior to all others i don't really think they think that i think deep down inside they have probably a lot of insecurities and inferiority feelings of inferiority actually but they project this superiority like somebody who really really wants what's best for you you're gonna feel supported by them you're gonna feel that they want what's best for you and they have good intentions and they have like joy in their heart and they have um, a positive mindset to want you to succeed and be the best version of yourself and if you have friends in your life that are like that and you look at the dichotomy and look at the relationship with the toxic person who this you always had this underlying feeling that they didn't really care about what was best for you at all and you know really it's because i think narcissism is like the worst kind of addiction because it's an addiction to external validation they have these feelings of emptiness and you know whole, this emptiness inside so they're always looking to the outside world to validate them right they have no ability to self-validate or to get in touch with the higher power that they have a connection with where they care more about what their higher power thinks than they do about you know um what humans think and what they th or recall it your higher power could be your higher self caring more about what you think 
and what your standards are and what your you know moral code is and living up to that and being the best possible version of yourself like they don't operate in that language they don't operate in that world they do not operate in really truly in their hearts wanting other people to be the best version of themselves they just don't right and so we gave away our power we gave away our power to people who are ill-equipped you gave away your self-esteem and let your self-esteem ride on what this person who is totally messed up mentally and toxic what they think about you to dictate how you think about you we gave away our power and i just you know really i i ask you to to challenge that to challenge that notion and to ask yourself why you know why did i give away my power to somebody who is ill equipped to have any kind of power over me because you know i know we, we did a lot of things um my opinion is is a lot of times we stay in a position where we are being hurt psychologically spiritually emotionally financially uh, for the possibility of love and approval from somebody who is incapable of really approving of anyone or giving any kind of genuine love. Because if love is defined by, you know, let's get off on a spiritual axiom, but if love is defined by um, pay, love is kind, love is patient, love does not rejoice in evil, love, you know, love hopes it, it provides hope it provides goodness and grace and beautiful things I'm, I'm not quoting Corinthians correctly but you know those are some of the things but it's it love is where you truly want other people to be the best version of themselves that they can be and that is not what you got from a narcissist the love bombing was not patient that's not patient the love bombing was not kind. Um, it, it rejoiced in evil. They rejoice in evil. Um, you know, so that's not love. And so staying in a position to be hurt for the possibility of love and approval from somebody who is incapable of love is, um, you know, that is a fool's errand. It's a fool's errand. And I know that, that this a lot of times is because we had childhood trauma and we think that love has to be earned. We don't feel like we're good enough. We don't feel like we're worthy just as we are or lovable or acceptable just as we are. And that goes back to that childhood wounding of either a narcissistic or addicted parent or just some toxic caregivers when you were little with mental illness or whatever they had. But like you are worthy, you are lovable and you don't need somebody who is toxic, who thinks everyone's a piece of crap to tell you that you're not. I mean, their whole mindset about the world is one of paranoia of, you know, thinking all people are less than or inferior to them. You know, of course, that's probably hiding this mask of insecurity, but like, you know, that's their whole mindset. So, so that person had ill intentions for you from the day they met you because they are, they have pathological and toxic self-centeredness so when all we think about is ourselves we don't want what's best for other people you know um what is a C i think it's c.s lewis that says the problem is not that you think too highly of yourself or too lowly of yourself it's that you think too often of yourself so narcissism is pathological self-centeredness and you know, using people to get what they want, using people as appliances, using people as tools, using people for supply, using people to prop their ego, their very fragile ego up. You do not want somebody like that telling you how to feel about yourself. Um, I think it's so important to start getting in touch with how you feel about you. And the more you are able to get in line and in touch with your core values, what are my core values? What are the rules that I want to live by? What is my moral code? What's my moral compass? You get in touch with that and you set boundaries accordingly. You set boundaries that are in line with whatever your core values are, whatever your core truth is and you don't let people into your life that are not in line with your core values if you value integrity 
Be surrounded by people that have integrity. If you value honesty, be surrounded by honest people. If you value authenticity, surround yourself by authentic people. If you value love and joy, surround yourself by people that are joyful, full of joy, full of love. As in love is patient, love is kind, love does not rejoice in evil. Surround yourself with people that um, want what's best for you and that have that kind of mindset. So, you know, and I know a lot of times, sometimes with narcissists, they're pretty good at putting on a mask and acting like they have those characteristics. But I really think if you push in the beginning and you really dig deep and you really ask them like, hey, what are your core values? And then watch their life. Does their life line up? Do their actions line up with their core values? So early on, if I would have asked this person, hey, do you have the core value of service to others, helping to try to make the world a better place, um, trying to better humanity, trying to be a kind person, do you have those core values? And this person probably would have said yes, but if I would have looked at the person's life, I would have noticed that they did nothing to help anyone outside of themselves, nothing. And they, they couldn't be bothered to help anyone outside of themselves. And sometimes, you know, in my case, somebody like, you know, hopped onto my coattails because I do care about service to others. I do care about helping others and I show that through my actions in my life, right? Not perfectly, not, you know, and I don't always know how to help others, but I have that core value, service to others, helping to try to make the world a better place, to make it a safer, kinder place, to help people heal their trauma and their wounding. Like those are my core values. And if I would have really stepped back and noticed this person did not do anything to help other people outside of themselves, they really didn't. So notice that actions words not lining up not lining up so that goes back to the other core value of integrity like do your actions line up with your words and if you value integrity then don't be with somebody who's a liar because liars are the people where their actions do not match their words um you know the person i was with said they were completely faithful and completely against cheating and it was out absolutely outside of the realm of what they considered acceptable for other people or themselves and this person was a cheat you know a cheater so actions not matching words very important you know little things like hey I, you know i want this bathroom to be finished and remodeled nine years later bathroom still under construction actions not matching words watch watch that and if you're if you're a codependent you might be so busy trying to fix it and trying to make it better and trying to do more than your share that you don't even stop and step back and notice where this person's actions are not matching up with their words so you know if you want to live in integrity with your core values then make sure that the people that you surround yourself with also share your core values especially somebody that you're choosing to be a life partner with so um, i hope that this is helpful for you but um, we don't we don't go to the disturbed to tell us how to feel about ourselves we don't go to the mentally ill toxic person who hates everyone in the world to try to love us right that's not a good place to go it's going that's going to the dry well for water we don't do that and i don't care that there were bread crumbing or little tiny instances where they might have done the right thing if overall you're watching somebody where their actions don't match their words i would say cut them out of your life thanks so much and i hope you're practicing radical self-care bye